All right. So today, what what I want to talk about is just um, everything to do with discriminants. All right. Uh, I'm talking about discriminants, like from basics all the way to excellence question. I want to run through the whole things, but um, I want to give you guys a fresh start in a sense where I'm going to kind of treat it like that you guys actually don't know about it. So the first thing I'd like you guys to do is um, in your papers, um, I want you to draw me a parabola and then a straight line. Just a rough one. Doesn't need to be like um, just any odd parabola. It could be positive, it could be negative, it could be a straight line. Okay. And then what I'd like you to do is when you draw this parabola and a straight line, have you drawn a straight line as well? Cool. Have a look at your neighbors and see what type of um, diagrams they've actually drawn. Like there's five of you here. Just have a, can you guys just show me your diagram that you've just done? Okay. So in that diagram that he is holding, how many times is the straight line cutting the parabola? Anybody? Two. Two. Sweet. What have you done? in your one twice once once twice once twice okay so i'm hoping that you guys get the idea of like this that there's three situations that could happen here you've got i asked you guys to draw a, a parabola and a straight line uh some of you did this all right and some of you actually did this but none of you actually did this one here where the straight line doesn't actually intersect the parabola now is that a possible situation can a situation like that happen yeah of course you can have it because i mean like if you have a um a parabola that's just coming up to that point there of course you could have a straight line like this you could also have a straight line that looks like this but it doesn't actually touch the parabola as well so the idea you guys need to get in get into your heads is that there is uh two points where it actually cuts but we actually call this um two intercepts oh actually two so let's actually keep it a bit more simpler here it cuts it at two points here it cuts it at one point and here it cuts it there are no points of intersection all right now when we talk about the discriminant it actually comes from the quadratic formula all right so remember that your quadratic formula it actually looks like this. You've got x equals minus b plus or minus b squared minus 4ac over 2a. Now, the discriminant is this part right here. I'm going to highlight it for you guys so you can see it. Just this part. Okay? You don't have to worry about the square root symbol. It's just b squared minus 4ac. Okay? Now, think about it like this. Uh, when you take a square root of a number, how many solutions do you get? Two. Because if you think about it, if you take, um, say for example, you take square root of 49, then you're going to get positive 7 or minus 7. Do you guys agree with that? Um, and I guess, is, is that true for any positive number? So if I take any positive number and if I square root it, will I get two answers? Well, let's try it out. Uh, throw me a number here. Let's go with square root of, I don't know, 5. Now, I know the calculator is only going to give you the positive answer, but can we actually have negative 2.236 as one of the answers as well? Yes. So when you take square root of a positive number, you're always going to get two solutions. All right. What about square root of negative number? Is it actually, does it actually work in your calculator if you try square root of ne negative number? Not possible, right? No. Okay, try square root of zero. What happens with that? Let's try it out. Just zero. Now, does zero have a symbol? No. So what we're going to have is we got the second situation here. When you take square root of zero, that's just going to be zero and that only has one solution. And then we've discovered that if we take square root of a negative number, your calculator comes up with some kind of math error. Yeah. So another way to think about it is that it has no solutions. 
Okay, can you guys see the connection between the three graphs that I've drawn up there and the square root numbers there? Yes. Yeah? So if you get if you get square root of a negative number, so in other words, we don't really remember that for the discriminant, we don't look at the square root symbol, we just look at that blue highlighted part. So in this case, we can say if b squared minus 4ac is positive. But the way we say positive is by writing it like this, it's greater than zero. Okay? In the second situation, we can say that b squared minus 4ac, that highlighted part, has to be zero. I'm talking about this part here, has to equal zero. And if that colored part equals zero, then you only have one solution. If the colored part here is positive, then you get two solutions. And if the colored part here is negative, but another way of writing negative is b squared minus 4ac is less than zero. Yeah? Now, you might be wondering, well, okay, that's all wonderful, but what the hell is b squared minus, what, what does b, a, and c stand for? Now, for that, we gotta go back right to the quadratic formula. Our quadratic formula there was ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero. It actually comes from that generalized formula. So our a value is there, our b value is there, and our c value is there. Is that all right? So if any time you see the question that talks about discriminant, uh, solutions, two solutions, one solution, no solution, you are dealing with discriminant. And this picture that you have right here with this, um, I'm talking about this picture should come into your head straight away okay and if you forget it always go back to the whole positive numbers zero and negative numbers that's part of it you make sense to you because you know that square root of a positive number is two solutions square root of a negative number not possible and square root of zero is one solution okay now I, if I'm if I'm brutally honest, it's like I think you are almost guaranteed to get a question on discriminant at all times. It's it'll be somewhere. It'll be an excellence question. It'll be an achieved question. It'll be a merit question. Don't know where, but it will be there, and it's one of the easiest marks you can pick up in terms of moving forward. Okay, I'm I'm going to throw you guys in the deep end. We're going to actually look at some exam questions um, from the last few years of discriminant questions. Now the first few of them, I might need to help you guys out just to kind of get, get you rolling. But uh, some of them will be a bit challenging, I, I promise you that. But this is kind of like a, we're focusing just on discriminants today. Okay, so I'll go find some questions for you guys. Give me a second. All right, our first question is this one here. Just gonna grab it and go to the other side. By the way, guys, these notes are available for you in Google Classroom if you want it. Uh, paste it here. Okay, now, the moment you're talking about roots right here, that's literally uh, another word for saying intersection, solutions, all of those things are similar kind of language that they use. So if you look at this one, it says for what values of m does the equation have two equal roots? So going back to this, if it's two equal roots, are we looking at, uh, which situation are we gonna look at? You guys can go left hand side, middle or right hand side. Positive, positive? you think it's positive? That one? Oh sorry, left, you said positive. What do you think? Left, middle, or left? Left? Man, all five of you guys picked left. Now let me ask you this question here. It's, I think the key word here is two equal roots. Now if you go to the left-hand side, and if you look at the two points here, are they equal? I mean, there's, there's definitely two solutions, but are they two equal solutions? Two equal solutions, like, um, let me go back here. 
for example if I look at um, I want to I'm gonna take my time with this one all right because it's like I want you guys to understand the difference between so let's say I do this x squared plus 10x plus 25 equals to 0 all right now if I factorize this I actually get x plus 5 x plus 5. Do you guys agree with that? If I solve it, I get x equals to negative 5 and negative 5. Do you guys agree with that? Now let me ask you this question. For this particular one, is there two solutions or two equal roots? So if it's two equal roots, does it mean is it two solutions or one solution? Does that make sense? So when it says two equal roots, it's automatically you think you're going to go to that left-hand side one because you see the number two and you're like, oh, yeah, yeah it's two solutions, is that. But the, the word that's extra one extra word there that's making it a little bit trickier is that equal part. So when it says two equal roots, we're actually looking for one root or one solution. And if you're looking for one solution, it's the middle one that we're using, right? Okay, so this is the equation that we have. We've got 6x squared minus mx equals to 3. Now, I'm actually going to do this one for you guys, um, and then I'm going to give you guys a similar question like this, but I'm going to change the equation a bit. All right, so we, need, we now know, because it's two equal roots, that b squared minus 4ac is equal to 0. Yeah, we know that. So our first step in this is we need to substitute A, B, and C. Now, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell you guys this. Whenever you get a quadratic and if it doesn't equal to 0, make it equal to 0. Because that will make the problem a lot more simpler. So I'm going to rearrange this and I'm going to write this as 6x squared minus mx minus 3 equals to 0. Now... Oh, sorry, I forgot. I copied it wrong. Thank you, thank you. So that was a minus there, then that should be plus 3. Sorry, thank you for that. So I believe you guys can do this from this point onwards because your A, what's your A value equal to? 6. What is your B value equal to? Minus M. And C is equal to? 3. So just substitute into B squared minus 4AC equals to 0 and rearrange to find out what B is. Sorry, find out what M is. So try it out. I'll give you guys a couple of minutes to try it out while I go look for another question. Okay, so B is equal to minus M. So I'm going to put minus M squared. Make sure you put the brackets around the minus M. Otherwise, you will end up making a silly mistake. Minus 4 times A, which is 6, times C, which is 3. And that's equal to 0. Now, negative m squared is equal to m squared. And then you got 6 times 3, 18, 4, 72. Negative 72 equals to 0. And then m squared equals to 72. And m is equal to square root of 72. What'd you get? Is that right so far? What I've done? Have I made a mistake? So you guys got square root of 72, right? 8 point what? 8.4. 8 8.4 something? Yeah. Yeah, let's chuck in a couple of more extra decimals. What do you got? 8.4? 8. Okay. Is that correct? What's missing? Yes, plus or minus. When you take square root of a positive number, you're always going to have plus or minus. Okay? Now, to give you guys a bit of a... just an update on that question, that question is worth... So have a look at question B at the bottom there. That's a merit question. Um, and I think correct substitution into discriminant and set to zero. So doing the third line, 
you can get an achieved for it. Okay, so it's really important that you guys understand that dis discriminant is really plays a huge part and it's really easy to pick up some points on it as well. Okay, now I'm going to ch challenge you guys a bit more. I'm actually going to give you guys a slightly different question. This is an excellence question and I know you'll be like, what, I'm, I'm not ready for excellence yet, but um, have a look at this. Because half the problem with these questions is coming up with the right discriminants. Okay, so this is question number two. Uh, or do you guys want to do a merit one first or do you want to do an excellence one straight away? Let's give it a go, all right? Because you'd be surprised at how much you actually know. So, this is my question right now. Find values for k, which this expression is always greater than zero. So my first question to you guys is this. We're working with discriminants. What are you going to use? So think back. If, you, if you're unsure, think back to the, the three diagrams that we did. So this is first diagram, two, one, and none. In this one, it was greater than zero. This one, it was equal to zero. And the right-hand side, which was less than zero. Which one do you think we're going to be using? Left, middle, or right? And remember, go back and read the question properly again before you decide. Okay. So I got a few folks here that actually all of you guys have said left, left side. Now, let's go back and read the question again, all right? When I read the question, it says find values for k so that it's always greater than zero. Now, if I was to draw this as a graph, this particular graph is going to look like this. Do you guys agree? Is it always greater than zero? Because you know how the y value is zero right there, right? Do you guys agree with that? Yes. Now, I want to. <clears throat> Sorry, go on. Yes, it can. Sometimes it can come down. You're right. And I, and, I, and, I, and I guess I want to match you guys up now with something else. You know how I showed you these three diagrams with um, two intersects, one intersect, and no intersection? I'm going to add. I'm going to add to that. I'm going to create another set of. Diagrams and it's going to have that same idea behind it, but I want you guys to watch what happens You know how in the left hand side there were two solutions and yeah, you were right sometimes it does go below the when it goes below the x-axis This is the situation because that has two solutions Sometimes it just touches the x-axis am I right yeah. so it could look like this That's touching there or it could look like this where it's touching there. That's when it has one solution because it's only touching the x-axis once. Then you have another diagram which can which is above the x-axis or below the x-axis. So again, see how the left hand side, middle side, right hand side, the diagrams are popping up? So now go back to the question and tell me, will you still do the left? What are you going to do? So we, we now know it's not the left. You're going to do the middle. Okay. What are you going to do? Right side? Right side? You reckon middle? You're going to go with right. Okay. Now let's go back. I mean, I did give you guys a big clue. The clue was this. This graph right here has to be greater than zero. If it's greater than zero, it looks like this. So, can it really be the middle one? Because the middle one is actually touching the x-axis, right? So it can't be the middle one. It has to be that one there. And because of that, our discriminant has actually got to be less than zero. Even though the question says, the question's asking you for when is the graph greater than zero. It's not saying when is the discriminant greater than zero. Notice the difference? Yeah. That's why this is an excellence question, guys. But trust me, 
It is easy. Just got to do a few of them and you'll get the language behind it. Okay, so we've got this. We have kx squared minus 12x plus 5k as the equation. We now know b squared minus 4ac is less than zero. So what I'd like you guys to do is substitute for those values and get as far as you can with this question. And then I'm going to show you the final bits to actually get it into the excellence. Okay, so what happens is I've asked you guys to write down the values for A. A is equal to K. B equals minus 12 and C equals to 5K. So the next step is substituting them in. So you got negative 12 squared minus 4 times A, which is K times C, which is 5K, and then this is less than zero. Now, we're gonna get 144 minus 20K squared is less than zero, okay? And I guess this is the part where people start making mistakes. Like when I say mistakes, I'm actually gonna do this in a different colors to show you like what, the, what people's mistakes are. So this is what they do. They do negative 20k squared is less than negative 144. All right, and then they do this. k squared is negative 144 divided by negative 20. And then they remember from level one, oh, if I divide by a negative number, the inequality changes. Yeah, that's fine as well. Then they do this. k is greater than square root of negative 144 over negative 20. And so you end up with, what did you guys get for that value? 2.683. 2.683? And it was plus or minus, am I correct? That's what you guys did. It's a classic mistake people do, all right? Uh, unfortunately, this is not how you do things when it's a quadratic, okay? Now, I'm going to show you guys two different ways of doing this. The first method is, is let's say you did up to here, right? then we can actually use this for our first method. Now in our first method, what I'm gonna ask you guys to do is this. And I'm gonna go right here, this part. Have a look at it. What type of graph is that? You've got something minus something squ x squared, like k squared. So what type of graph is it? It's, is it a positive parabola or a negative parabola? Negative. It's a negative parabola, right? because of that negative 20k squared. So we don't know, what we do know is that we have these two values, 2.683 plus or minus. That point right there is gonna look like this. So that's gonna be 2.683. That's gonna be negative 2.683. Oh, sorry. And we also know that the graph is a negative parabola, so it's gonna look like this, right? Now, in this red box, we're not worried about the top question, we're not worried about the discriminant, we're, we're just looking at this red box right now. In this red box, you've got a parabola, and the parabola has to be less than zero. And the only two places where it's less than zero is one is here, and the other one is there. Do you agree with that? So, our first solution, is I always write like this. Whenever the, this is something I did with my year 13s as well. So whenever there's two colored zones like this, the first thing I do is I write and. Right in the middle, between those two colored things. Then I actually write x and x. Okay, just watch, watch what happens when I, when I actually do this. Oh, actually not x and x. Oops, sorry, 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 sorry negative 2.683 and 2.683, like that, sorry. It's a mistake, my mistake. And then for this one, see how the x is bigger than 2.683? So I would put the arrow and x, and then on the other side, it's less than negative 2.683, so I'd put the arrow and x before, before that number. So it basically says anything above positive 2.683 and anything below negative 2.683, this 
equation would actually work out. And that's literally what, actually I should have put x, I should have put k, because it was asking for values of k. Now this is from some of the things we've done from level one, but this will come again in level three as well. But I just want you guys to get the hang of it. Can I, can I show you guys another example? What if it looked the other way? So I'm actually gonna do that at the bottom here, but that, that's pretty much it for that question. But uh, what I'll show you guys is this. So let's say you get, there's two situations that could happen. And I'm gonna put these values here as minus three and plus three, minus three and plus three. So situation one is when we're looking below the x-axis, Situation two is when it's actually above the x-axis, all right? So this is the difference of how I write it. So I write down, in this case, because it's two zones, I actually write and, and I write the two numbers next to it, negative three and positive three. And then here, x has to be bigger than three, or x has to be less than three. But if it was positive, then what I do is instead of writing and in the middle, I put x first. And then I put my two symbols. And then I put down negative three and positive three. So I want you guys to notice how that comes there, that ends up there. That kind of says that it's between negative three and positive three. As for this, It's actually saying x is actually bigger than this side or x is actually smaller than this side. Okay? Another question? All right, guys. So this is from 2016. Nice and simple one. Nice achieved question. Just to give you a little bit of a break before I jump back into the horrible ones. Try this question here. All it's asking you is find the discriminant of the quadratic equation of this one here. So have a go. Man, you guys can do some crazy ones, but this one you're struggling with. Okay, so rearrange first. So we're going to get x squared minus 10x minus 3 equals to 0. Now, Ujjat, you did another method, which was 0 equals 10x plus 3 minus x squared. Really important that we write x squared first, then bx and c and so on. Okay, so I'm, I want to show you guys both situations here. First case, we've got a equals 1, b equals minus 10, c equals minus 3. In the second situation, you've got a equals negative 1, b equals 10, c is equal to positive 3. So this question is asking just for the discriminant. So it's only asking for b squared minus 4ac. So this is what you guys should have got. You should have got negative 10 squared minus 4 times 1 times negative 3. So you've got 100 plus 12, 112. And in this side, you got 10 squared minus 4 times negative 1 times c. So you've got a 100 plus 12, which is 112. Now, on the odd occasion, they might ask you to say and describe what it actually means. What does it mean in this case if your discriminant is 112? How many solutions? Why? Yeah, it's correct, but why is it two solutions? Because it's, yeah, it's bigger than zero. Okay, so you can basically say... Uh, it has two solutions because b squared minus 4ac is greater than zero. Because it's a positive number, if it's a positive number, then it's bigger than zero, and therefore you're going to have two solutions. Does that make sense, Ev? Did you get 112? No. Okay, I'll come by and have a look. Okay, so I pulled up another big question here, guys, for you guys to try and do. This is from 2015. Um, as usual, the first kind of breakdown is, are we going to go with left, middle, or right? 
Now this one, it actually says it's a quadratic function and it never touches the x-axis. So if it never touches the x-axis, that means it could either look like this or it could look like this. If that's the case, what's the story with the discriminant? It has to be? It has to be negative. What's another way of saying if it's negative? No, 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 no. Think. No, solution. no solutions. So if it's no solutions, think back to that memory that you had. Was it the right, middle, or, right. sorry, left, right. middle, or right? right? Right side? And what was the right side one that you guys actually took down? The equation was b squared minus 4ac is less than zero. So b squared minus 4ac is less than zero for this. That's the first step. The second step is coming up with your a, b, and c values. Now your equation is x squared plus 3k minus 1x plus 2k plus 10. Now have you guys noticed how they actually put the bracket around 2k plus 10? It's really weird, right? They've actually put a bracket around 2k plus 10. That's because there's a particular reason. They want you to see that that whole bracket is actually the c value so if you look at it that is ax squared plus bx plus c which means the c value here is this entire 2k plus 10 and then the b value here is the entire 3k minus 1 i'm going to stop there i'm going to give you guys about five minutes to try this question out have a go See how far you can actually go with this question, and I'll actually tell you guys where you're going to get your achieved merit and excellence from. So, the first step was writing down b squared minus 4ac is less than 0. Now, the b part is 3k minus 1, and that thing is squared. Minus 4 times a, a is 1, c is 2k plus 10, and that's less than 0. Now, it's really important that you get the expanding part correct. So 3k minus 1, because it's squared, I need to write it up like this. Well, if you're comfortable expanding without it, that's fine as well. <coughs> minus 4 times 1, that's just 4. 2k plus 10, and that's less than 0. So I've got 3k times 3k, which is 9k squared. 3k times negative 1, which is negative 3k. Negative 1 times 3k is negative 3k. And negative 1 times negative 1, which is plus 1. Then I've got negative 4 times 2k, which is negative 8k. Negative 4 times 10, which is negative 40. And all of this is still less than 0. So then I could do 9k squared. Uh, I've got minus 6, minus 14k, minus 39 is less than 0. Is that all right? Or have I made a mistake somewhere? double check I want to show you guys how to actually solve this from this point onwards but so you can you can actually factorize this okay you can you can factorize this and actually find out what the two solutions are but I'm gonna ask you guys this because it's 9k squared what type of parabola is it positive or negative so if it's a positive parabola and I'm just looking at this particular case here this parabola and I'm not going to worry about this line. The positive parabola looks like this, right? Where this is the x-axis. Okay? Now, I need to find out what these two points are. And guys, can I get everybody to have a look at this, please? I know you're taking this down, but like, just have a look how I do this. So right now, this is what I have. I have a positive parabola because of the 9k squared, which means I know that it's going to cut the x-axis. It could cut it at two points could cut at one point but I know because it's less than zero but even if you're not sure actually I got no idea what this looks like okay let's say we don't know what it looks like what I would say is go to your graphics calculator and actually draw the graph so go into graph mode and type in 9x squared minus 14x minus 39 when you draw it you guys can actually see two points where it's actually cutting the x-axis. Does that make sense? 
So that means if I go back into my diagram, I know that my diagram looks like this and I don't know, my parabola looks something like that. But I need to know what these two points are. And to do that, I need to go back, go back to my graph and there's a button. You guys using your calculator for this or <laughs> just watching? I think you should actually use it. So go from, so go back and go, go back to menu, go to graph mode and make sure you type in this equation. And to use the X, make sure you use the X underneath the red alpha button. Okay? I will wait for you guys just to make sure that you guys get the graph. Whoa, I don't know how far I missed out. Oops. I think my calculator instructions might have actually not come through in that. Should I just go through it again just for a quick yes. reminder? <laughs> you guys are lazy, man. Uh, where was I? Where was I? Okay, so always do this, all right? Go to the press menu in the graphics calculator, go to the graph mode, uh, write in your equation. I want to clear it all. So write in your equation. So you've got nine, and make sure this x, Katrina, I think you used the wrong x here. It's the one under the red button, x squared minus 14x minus 39. That should give you guys a rough shape of the graph. And then press F5 for G-Solve and click on root. That actually gives you what these two points here. So the first point is negative 1.44. And then you press the right button in your keypad to get to 3. So that's how we get those two values. And because it's less than 0, that means it's below the x-axis. And then we write up our two zones right there, negative 1.4423. All right? Again, easy. I, I would say this is actually one of the easy excellence questions. As long as they don't give that 2016 version of that question, you'll be fine. Okay. Time-wise, guys, we've only got five minutes. I'm going to leave you guys with that. Um, yeah, that's basically it. Does that kind of help with this comment? Just the idea? So uh, into recap... This particular image here is really important that you actually remember this, this idea that when there is no intersection points, that b squared minus 4ac is less than zero. When there's one point, and remember the language they use, two equal roots. So two equal roots is the same thing as saying one solution. Two unique solutions are when you have like two different points. And then when you're dealing with the graphs, also remember, so when the graph cuts the x-axis at two points, the discriminant is greater than zero. When it cuts just at one point, then the discriminant is equal to zero. And if the graph is above the x-axis or always below the x-axis, then the discriminant has to be less than zero. Okay? And of course, if you're aiming for excellence, this how to write the correct zones is also really important. Okay? I cannot stress this enough because people do these questions all the way to the very last part and then they just get, they don't know how to do the, this intervals correctly. And if you do the intervals correctly, you can get an excellence, which is like seven, seven points. That's a nice, nice, easy one to do. Okay, cool. That's me for this session. Thank you.